low pro down south girl all black nice rack yeah i need her in my world love at first sight told her how to ride a bike you would think she wallowed out but she keep that thing tight she got a lot of ball when she bites standing tall like an oscar yeah that girl super tight i said it on the right i don't know yeah she might let a motherfucker wipe her off in cali like two dice right she hand it to you take it back like sight the way she wear them shorts she made me harder than a pipe Oh, man, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to say. Fuck that shit, man. She amazing. The way you move, the way you move. Y'all ready for this? You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart I didn't mention this in the first segment of the show. Well, there's two things I need to mention to you uh, that we're going to uh, effort today on the show. One, we are going to play on a Throwback Thursday classic stew from the Two Live Stews historian, my man Earl McDowell. Um, we've got an interview that we did with Floyd Mayweather Sr. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, when I tell you, I gave out, uh, I told the definition of Radio Goal, I think it was last week, which Radio Goal is just something that, that is just going to really excite you, something that's just bona fide, good, good-ish. Uh, so this was an interview that we did with Floyd Mayweather Sr., and I think they were doing – uh, well, they had to have. They had to have. I think they were doing um, a hard knocks on Ricky Hatton, or maybe it was on – I can't remember exactly who. But but Floyd Mayweather Sr. was training um, – I think he was training Hatton, and I don't really even remember the details of this. I apologize, man. I'm just so happy that we get the clip from Bro McDowell. But anyway, it's back in 2009, April of 2009. The Stews talked to Floyd Mayweather Sr. If you've seen him on HBO's Hard Knocks, um, on uh, you, you know the type of character uh, that, that Floyd Mayweather Sr. is. And is it Hard Knocks? Whatever the boxing show is where they follow boxers right before they have a big prize fight. Um, so you don't want to miss this. I think in our number three. I think in hour number three, we'll play the interview that we did with Floyd Mayweather Sr. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and I'm getting confirmation. I was right. I'm getting confirmation. He was training Ricky Hatton. And I always tell the stories how we were in Vegas that weekend for that fight. And, uh, man, it was just incredible, the fan support that Ricky Hatton had, man. Like, the, the British fans, uh, was it British or Irish? I think it was the British fans. The British fans took over Vegas, man. I mean, they took over Las Vegas, Nevada, man. There's only one Ricky Hatton. Like, they were chanting that all throughout the casinos and, and Vegas all weekend long, man. It was a crazy, crazy scene. I mean, they had much, much support for Hatton. Then he went on to get his ass kicked. <laughs> yeah. But trust me on this. Trust me on this. If you've never heard this, a lot of y'all probably have heard it because, you know, you're old school students listeners. But if you haven't heard this man and you know Floyd Mayweather Sr. and his personality, you don't want to miss this. I think we'll play that in hour number three of the show today on the Doug Stewart Show. Also, (laughs) 
Also, because we uh, we did the show late today, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, but because we did the show late today, we may not be able to do this, but my wife agreed to come on the show. We have some new developments in Doug Stewart not seeing um, the color purple gate. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you got Watergate, you got Spygate, you got all of these different gates, Deflate Gate and whatnot. Uh, we have some latest developments on Doug Stewart not seeing color, the color purple gate. And so, if, you, if you're new to the show and you are listening to the Doug Stewart Show, we brought to you by FireFan.com. Go to FireFan.com and uh, become a member of my league. If you're new to the show, if this is, just happens to be your first time listening to the Doug Short Show, um, uh, Stewie's, a couple of Stewie's very angry with me because I've never seen The Color Purple. We were talking about the Grammys, and, and I kept saying how I'm a big movie fan, and I, I pretty much seen any uh, notable movie uh, over the last 30 years. Uh, I guess more so black uh, people's favorite movies or whatever. Because a lot of them crappy movies that they talk about at the Grammys or whatnot, I ain't seen them shit. But so I was saying I've seen all these notable black movies, and it came up. And it's come up a couple of times, and I've never seen The Color Purple. Um, I want to have my wife on. We're, we're trying to get her on, make sure that we can have her on a certain time when she don't lose her job. We need that damn job. Um, to talk a little bit about the movie The Color Purple and tying it into the conversation that we've had on the Doug Stewart Show over the last couple of days. So I'm thinking in hour number two of the show, we will have on the wife, Monica Stewart, to talk color purple, the color purple gate here on the Doug Stewart Show. All right. Very interesting turn of... <laughs> right, turn of issues. Right, so so stay tuned for that. You you definitely don't want to miss it. But the number is 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Show.com. Once again, a big win for the Boston Celtics last night, 103-99. to They went basket for basket at the end of this thing, man. Kyrie come down and hit a big shot, and, and uh, Isaiah come down and hit a big shot. Jay Crowder come down and hit a big shot, and it just went back and forth with LeBron. I mentioned uh, Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving had 28 points last night, 10 for 19, a very efficient 10 for 19. LeBron James had 28 points last night as well as he went 10 for 21 from the field. But as I mentioned at the top of the show, man, Isaiah Thomas uh, played 35 minutes, 31 points. Uh, they, they less Isaiah Thomas at 5'9". Like, I don't even think the original Isaiah Thomas was that short. I think Isaiah Thomas, Detroit Piston, was like 6'1". Isaiah Thomas right now at 5'9", and I even heard somebody say that's, that's being generous. At 5'9", right now, offensively, is in the same conversation with LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, uh, James Harden, you know, Kevin Durant, I mean, he is absolutely dominating right now on the offensive end of the floor. That's a great thing. I always root for the little people. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Happy for that man. You know, being born with the name Isaiah Thomas, you would think that he's always, uh, you know, being being watched. You know, it has a little bit of attention on him, first of all, for his name, but then his game, you know. But, but my gosh, did anybody – Expect Isaiah Thomas when he came out of college. Did anybody expect this kid to be this good, man? I mean, fabulous. Shouts out to Isaiah Thomas representing all of the short men in this country. Not me because I'm slightly above average height. But shouts out to Isaiah Thomas representing the little guy. (laughs) Right. Now, listen. We've seen a lot of small guys be great. Very good players in the NBA, you know, over our lifetime. We've seen a lot of very good NBA players that were 5, 10, and under. You know, the Muggsy Bogues of the world, cats like that, man. Very good player, solid player. But at this height, at this height doing what he's doing, man, just dominating the fourth quarters. They keep talking about how he has the best efficiency in the fourth quarter out of any player offensively this year. 
Um, man, absolutely love his game, man. Absolutely love his game. But once again, as I said at, at the top of the hour, when we start talking about this, man, it don't matter. They're not going to beat the Cavaliers in seven games. I'm taking all bets. Uh, I'm, I'm taking all bets, you know, <laughs> that, um, that that won't happen. And we've seen crazier things happen, but I'm, I'm taking all bets that that won't happen this year. Uh, from Bootsy in the chat room on Spreaker.com. Let me read some of your messages in the chat room on Spreaker.com. Good afternoon, Stewies. From uh, Bootsy in the chat room on Spreaker.com, he says, I thought Isaiah would be nice like an Earl Boykins type and have a role, but not this good. I don't think nobody saw this. I don't think nobody saw this and spent his first couple of years in the NBA with, who was it, Sacramento Kings, I believe, and uh, been with Boston for a couple of years now, man, is really just coming to his own. I mean, there's no other way to say it. He's really just coming to his own. And to get to the basket at will, the way that, that he does, man, is just incredible. It like, defies all you know, science. It defies all science that this cat, 5'9", once again, they say that's generous, uh, would play the way that he's playing. It's just absolutely incredible. When this cat was in the tournament, and this is another guy that kind of made a name for himself when the NCAA tournament rolled around his uh, last year in college at Whitty Play in Washington. Um, you know, you saw flashes, and he was a big name, and he's one of the names that they talk about for March Madness. And, and they, I can't remember how far they went in the tournament the year, his last year in college. But nobody – nobody expected this dude to be this good and this dynamic. And he's fairly young. I'm trying to pull up his uh, his bio here and see how many years he's been in the league. So we came out in 2011. So he's been in the league for a while. This is probably like his sixth year in the league. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so this is his sixth year in the league right now. When the hell did he play for Phoenix? It must have been one of those trade deadline type things. So, yeah, played his first three years in Sacramento, played a year, 46 games for the Phoenix Suns. I don't even remember that at all. I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, then, obviously, playing the last two years for the Boston uh, uh, Celtics. But nobody, nobody. And that's the great thing, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, that's the great thing about March Madness is you you first hear or you first become aware of a Dwayne Wade you know, Dwayne Wade had been dominating at Marquette. And when he got in the tournament, that dude made hella money in draft status. And the rest is history. Dwayne Wade, one of the greatest players in NBA history. So uh, you remember, uh, what's the guy's name? There's so many players that you could think of. The Drew kid when he was in college. Uh, Dwayne Wade, Isaiah Thomas, uh, Harold the Show Arsenal. You, you remember Harold? I don't know why I remember that name, but you remember Harold, the show Arsenal in the tournament from Weba State, dominated the tournament. I don't think it resulted in him getting a big contract and a long career in the NBA, but but it was it was big. It was it was all of the conversation about these guys that had been great and dominant all year long, and whatever the case may be, a smaller noted team from a lesser conference or something like that. But when they got a chance to shine on the brightest stage in the NCAA tournament, they did it. And uh, Isaiah Thomas, man, uh, nobody expected this guy to be this good. From Jay Fish to Microwave, he got the name because his daddy lost a bet and had to name his first son Isaiah Thomas. I heard that before. <laughs> right. I've heard that before. That His old man lost a bet and they had to name him Isaiah Thomas after Isaiah Thomas, the original Isaiah Thomas. Um, I don't know what type of wife he got, but my wife would not allow no shit like that. Better, no bet. <laughs> you talk about big shoes to fill. You talk about big shoes to fill. You're playing basketball, and your name is Isaiah Thomas. Uh, so I'm sure that, that caused questions all throughout his life. From ducking and dodging in the chat room on Spreaker.com, Thomas makes about $6.5 million. He's not a free agent until after the 2018 season. From Bootsy. Uh, Big L, yeah, I'll try when I can find the time to read it. I just never liked the movie. My wife loves it, though. Um, I think they're talking about The Color Purple. I don't want to get back into all of that conversation, but but we have a new revelation about me in The Color Purple. And I'm going to have the wife on to talk a little bit about it. You're going to want to hear this as well. From Run CNC, I'm still mad my Lakers passing them twice 
when he was a free agent, he wanted to 